Let's return to uh, to Silk Road and Ross Albrecht. So how did your path with this very difficult, very fascinating case uh, cross? We were looking to open a case against Tor because it was a problem. All the cases were closing uh, because Tor. So we went on Tor and we we came up with 26 web different onion, dot onions that we targeted. We were looking for nexuses to hacking because I was on a squad called CY2 and we were like the premier um, squad in New York that was working uh, uh, criminal cyber intrusions. And so, you know, any website that was offering hackers for hire or um, hacking tools for free, you know, or pay, paid services, uh, you know, like now we're seeing ransomware as a paid service and phishing as a paid service, um, anything that offered that. So we opened this case on, on uh, I think we called it, we so you have to name cases. One of the fun things in the FBI is when you start a case, you get to name it. And you, you would not believe how much time is spent in coming up with the name. Yeah. Um, you know, Casey goes by. I think we called this onion peeler because nice. of the yeah. So a little bit of humor, a little bit of wit, and some profundity to the language. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're I, gonna have to work with this for, for quite a lot. So Yeah, this one had the potential of being a big one, you know, because I think I think Silk Road was like the sixth on the list uh, uh for that case, but we all knew that was sort of the golden ring. If you could make the splash that that onion site was going down, then it would probably get some publicity. And, and that's part of, you know, law enforcement is getting some publicity out of it that, you know, that makes others think not to do it. I wish to say that Tor is the name of the project, the browser. What is the onion technology behind Tor? Let's say you want to go to a dot onion site. You'll you'll put in the dot onion you want to go to, and your computer will build uh, communications with a Tor relay, uh, which are all publicly available out there. Um, but you'll encrypt it. You'll put a package around uh, your data, and so it's, it's encrypted, and so can't read it. It goes to that that first relay. That first relay knows about you, and then knows about the next relay down the chain. And so it takes your data and then encrypts that on the outside and sends it to relay number two. Now, relay number two only knows about relay number one. It doesn't know who you are asking for this. And it goes through there, adding those layers on top, layers of encryption until it gets where it is. That, and then even the Onion service doesn't know, except for the, the relay it came from, who it's talking to. And so it peels back that gives the information, puts another layer back on. And so it's it's layers like you're peeling an onion back of uh, the different relays, and that encryption protects uh, who the sender is and what information they're sending. The more layers there are, the more exponentially difficult it is to decrypt it. I mean, you get to a place where you don't have to have so many layers because it, it doesn't matter anymore. It's mathematically impossible to yeah. <laughs> decrypt it. But, yeah, um, you know, it, the more relays you have, the slower it is. I mean, that's the, one of the big drawbacks on, on Tor is, is, is how slow it operates. So how do you peel the onion? So what, what are the different methodologies for trying to get some information from a cybersecurity perspective on these operations like the Silk Road? It's very difficult. Um, people have come up with different techniques. There, um, there, there's been techniques to put out in the in the news media uh, about how they do it. Um, running like massive amounts of relays, and, and you're controlling those relays. I think I think somebody tried that once. So there's a technical solution, and and what about social engineering? What about trying to infiltrate the actual humans that are using the, the Silk Road and trying to get in that way? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely could see the, the way of doing that. And in, in this case, uh, in, in our takedown, we use that. Um, there was one of my partners, uh, Jared Darryagan. He was an HSI investigator, and he had worked his way up to be a system admin on the site. Um, so that did gleam quite a bit of information because he was he was inside and, and talking to, uh, you know, at that time, we only know it as DPR or Dread Pirate Roberts. Uh, we didn't know who who that was yet, but, but we had that open communication. Um, you know, and one of the things, you know, the technical aspects on that is there was a Jabber server that was, uh, that's a communication type of communication server um, that was being used. And we knew that Ross had his Jabber set to uh, Pacific time. So we had a pretty good idea what, what part of the, the, we, what part of the country he was in. I mean, isn't that from, from, from DPR's perspective, from Ross's perspective, isn't that clumsy? He wasn't a, a, a he wasn't a big computer guy. 
Do you notice that aspect of like the technical savvy of some of these guys doesn't seem to be quite, why, why weren't they good at this? Well, the, the real techie savvy ones, we don't arrest. We don't get to them, we don't you find don't them. get to them. <laughs> Shout out to the techie uh, criminals. They're probably watching this. I mean, yeah, I mean, you were getting the low hanging fruit. I mean, you're getting the ones that can be caught. I mean, they, they, you know, we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about it, but the anonymous case, there was a guy named AV Unit. He's still, I lose sleep over him because we didn't catch him. We caught everybody else, we didn't catch him. 